my training is actually in Latin American history, and I came to studying the United States from a Latin Americanist perspective, and that kind of led me to ask different questions about the United States based on the, the ways that we study Latin America and the topics that we talk about when we when we study Latin America, I think, gave me a kind of insight into thinking about the United States from a different way. Um, but one thing that we study when we study Latin American history is looking at the process of colonization and independence and um, most of Spanish America, that, that is the, the parts of, of the Americas that were conquered by Spain, um, had or much of them had very large indigenous populations compared to say British North America, which did have significant Native American populations, but nothing like the giant Aztec empire and Inca empire with, with huge populations. And when Spanish America became independent, which was just a short time after when the US became independent, the leaders of the new countries were mostly Spanish descended elites who sort of stepped made a, a quick and easy step from being uh, representatives of the Spanish government to running the countries by themselves. Um, we're really concerned um, about how to deal with their very racially mixed and diverse populations when they were basically white supremacists in their minds, but like, okay, so how do we create a new country when we're kind of in the minority here as, as white people, as Euro descended people? Um, and one of the things that they did was to sponsor European immigration and say, okay, so if we want to have a real country, the real countries are European countries, and like we're European people, but we have too many people of color here, Native Americans, um, Afro descendants here, and you know, they very quickly abolished slavery and made everybody an equal citizen, um, but they also really wanted to increase the white population to sort of maintain what they thought was the proper racial balance, which is mostly white, um, so they created these big state-sponsored immigration schemes, um, and we learn that um, that the purpose of bringing in so many white people was to whiten the population and to sort of erase the presence of people of color in their new countries. And there was a kind of a weird combination of erasure and celebration so that like the, the former empires, the Aztec empire, the Inca empire were celebrated. Like we have this glorious Native American heritage, but indigenous people in the present were seen as like uh, not what they wanted their country to be. So they were supposed to be kind of um, erased and assimilated. Um, and when I started looking at Latin American immigration to the United States, um, one of the things that struck me was like, wow, the United States process of independence shared, had a lot in common with the Latin American process of independence in that the people who led the independence movement were the white elites of the, colon, of the colonizers. Um, they were all like rich white guys, right? Who led the independence movement in the United States. And they shared a lot of, even though they wanted independence from Great Britain, they certainly shared like white supremacist ideas with Great Britain and with Spain and with the people who fought for independence, who led the independence movements in Latin America. Um, but in some ways in British America, even to a greater extent, that is, they didn't want to abolish slavery um, and they didn't want to grant citizenship to people of color. So in when the United States was established, it was established very explicitly as a white country. Only white people could be citizens of the United States. And still there was this weird problem. Well, how do we deal with the, the demographic imbalance that white people are a minority? <laughs> Um, and so they too engaged in state-sponsored state immigration. Um, they created a huge project to bring in white immigrants. Um, and because according to the law, uh, 
the naturalization law passed by Congress in 1790, only white people could be citizens. Um, they didn't abolish slavery. And they actually, almost immediately after independence, embarked on a huge war against the Native American population to expand white control over not just the 13 colonies, but the entire North American continent. So from independence until the 20th century, the new countries in a period of permanent warfare, expansionist warfare, trying to take over more and more indigenous land. And to bring in more white immigrants to kind of replace that population that they're getting rid of. Um, so, you know, learning about this first in Latin America, it looked really obvious that this is what was happening in the United States. And since I hadn't really been trained in US history, I was kind of surprised to find out, oh, that's not how people usually tell the story of US independence and um, expansion. Um, because it looked just like what we were learning about Latin America. Um, but the complicated thing in the United States is, well, what about people of color who are trying to come to the United States? Now, they can't be citizens according to US law until, really, until World War II. Um, but uh, so, So the United States it creates this situation where we have a large population of non-citizens in the country and continue to encourage migration from places like China, from Mexico, um, as laborers who can't be citizens. Um, but the immigration, but they aren't considered immigrants. They're just considered workers who are supposed to work but never become citizens. And immigrants are supposed to be white Europeans. So to try to keep that correct uh, demographic balance of, of a white majority country. So it's really not until after World War II that all the racial restrictions on citizenship and immigration are removed. Um, but the underlying ideologies of how of the idea that the United States is a white country and we really don't want too many non-white immigrants coming into the United States, even if now technically they can become citizens. Um, you know, we heard that in statements like Donald Trump when he says, you know, we don't want immigrants from you know, expletive whole countries. We want immigrants from places, why can't we have more immigrants from places like Norway? And, you know, a lot of people acted really shocked and upset when Trump said that. And said, That's not who we are. We've always welcomed immigrants. Well, no, not really. Um, we've always conceived of immigration as a white project of um, taking native lands and replacing native populations with white people. So just to say something quickly about, I see your t-shirt there, um, Indians. That's, that's our school. Um, you know, why it feels really exploitative and grotesque to a lot of Native Americans to see like the symbolism of Native Americans, like mascots and stereotypes and names like Indians um, being kind of flourished around as something to be proud of when the history is one of genocide against Native Americans and attempts to replace Native Americans, to eliminate Native American populations and replace them with white populations. Um, and then to sort of hold up this, oh yeah, we love Indians. It just feels really um, just almost like another form of, of erasure. Um, and kind of like what I was saying about Latin America where um, the new countries, like said, oh yeah, the Aztecs were so great, but but we don't actually like the Indian people who live in our countries today. Um, we, we don't want to talk about them or give them rights. 